All right. Good morning. Good morning. So it's midday, actually, isn't it? So it's a good good day to you. <laughs> so I've just got to set myself up. I have my phone. I think I said this last week. I have my phone here so that I can see. Um, I don't know if it's going to work. Um, and then I can see your comments if you make any comments because I'm coming via Zoom because I can record it and it's just a bit more stable than doing a, a live straight in there. Oh, here we are. Hello, there I am. Okay, I just need to turn that down. There we go. Hello, Martina. Martina is here. Hello. Um, I will just give it half a second just so that people can pop on. Um, if you could do me a favour, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to do a few likes and loves and things. Because if you do that, then Facebook goes, oh, all right, then people are watching. We'll tell other people that it's on and then people will get notified because Facebook's um, a funny thing like that, isn't it? <laughs> it does that. So how are we? Oh, Leslie's here. Hello, Leslie. Um, how is everybody? Have you had a good week? Have we been busy? Because um, January sort of traditionally is fairly slow month cake wise. Um, it certainly is in the... Uh, wedding industry that many it's not a very popular month what you're more likely to be doing as I know some of you have is been doing wedding fairs and talking to couples and consulting and all that kind of stuff so um hopefully you've been doing all that getting to grips with all that hello dipping in and out that's all right Leslie <laughs> um I know you're a dipping in and out kind of girl aren't you that's not a problem at all uh, right. Oh, Amber's here. Hello, Amber. Hello. And there's a couple of seconds delay as well. So on my phone, I'm a couple of minutes behind. So if you ask me something or comment, it will take me perhaps a little while to um, to see it. Do ask questions as I go along, by the way. Um, if I can quote some puppies, of course. Leslie Jane and her puppies. Love your puppies. Hello, Louise. First time here, nice to have you here. Fabulous. Um, you'll soon sort of get the hang of me waffling on. <laughs> um, but I will try and keep it to the point. I've got a very busy day today. Um, I was online doing some of my Google Analytics with an expert this morning and she was talking me through. Um, and I've got a cake to do and I've got all sorts of things to do. And I was saying it's like, sometimes it's like London buses. You can have a really quiet, time perhaps a week where you've not got appointments or you know um you can get things done that you've been putting off and then suddenly loads of things come at you at once <laughs> I'm sure you've all had days like that and think, oh my god I can't do everything ah. um so it's a bit like that today um but I love it it beats my previous career hands down so I'm not complaining <laughs> we we'll always look on the bright side anyway right so we're going to think about pricing today um, it's possibly one of the trickiest things to get to grips with um, when you're under, sorry, I'm just going to keep checking my phone just in case there's any um, questions. It's probably the, the trickiest thing to get to grips with, particularly if you come from a non-business background, um, like I did. I came straight from teaching, sort of into running a business. And it is tricky. Because not just the calculating the actual amount, but the whole mindset about pricing, that is really quite difficult, particularly with wedding cakes. Because the first couple of times you calculate something, you think, Luminic, no one's ever going to pay that. <laughs> so you have to, you know, get your head around people will pay that or ideal clients will pay that. Um, if you haven't seen my um, live on ideal clients, it's in the guides. Have a look, because a lot of what I talk about in pricing depends on you knowing about ideal clients. In fact, a lot about everything that you do in business depends a lot on ideal clients. So you need to understand who you're aiming your products at, your cakes at. OK. Um, Oh, hello, Louise. Oh, you're in two places. <laughs> two places at once. She's everywhere, is Louise. She's omnipresent. Um, so first, yes, 
Yes, Louise's kitchen, scrumptious. That's a brilliant word. It's very Roald Dahl, isn't it? Scrumptious. Fabulous. Um, yeah, so I'm going to sort of talk about the, the two aspects. So I'll talk a little bit about, you know, the actual calculating um, of your pricing. But I also wanted to talk about the mindset aspect of it, because if you haven't got that right, then you're going to find it really difficult to do the calculating and the numbers and come up with something that you're happy to give to couples. OK, so you, excuse me looking down here. Let's put this on my computer then I don't have to. So the first thing to remember is, and by the way, these are all things that I didn't realise when I first started my business, but I realise now. <laughs> so I'm sort of talking to myself five, ten years ago. Um, the first thing you've got to remember is that your main aim for running a business is to make money, is to make a profit. So what you've got to know when you're pricing is that you are making a profit. And that profit, um, some of it you, you can keep for yourself. Some of it um, you put them back into your business to improve, to learn, to get new equipment, all that kind of stuff. OK, so profit is the name of the game. OK, there are different ways, obviously, to go about how you do profit. It doesn't. Wanting to make a profit doesn't make you sort of unethical or grabby or anything like that. Um, it's just it's pointless you doing it if you're not making a profit. You might as well go and get a job. It's pointless. Um, so, yeah, the whole basis of it, of it all is you've got to make money. OK, so as well as when you calculate, as well as all the um, actual costs, and I'll go through a quick list in a minute, although I'm bound to forget some. Um, you've also got to consider the time that you take and you've got to charge that in and you've got to do that properly. Just saying, oh, I'll add a tenner on for my time. No good if you're spending two days doing it. You might as well go and get a job. So honestly, <laughs> a lot of tough love today. You might as well. Um, and then you've got to charge the profit. I'll show you in a minute my spreadsheet that I use. I can't let you have a copy of the spreadsheet that's in my membership, um, but I can show you, you know, how it, it all fits together. OK. Um, got to know about your ideal clients. Watch last week's live. Find out a little bit about ideal clients. All businesses um, that have been running for any length of time will know about ideal clients. Um, because you then can you can aim what you do at those people. OK, look at last week's life. You'll get it. Um, be, be a bit fearless. Don't be afraid. It's really tricky when you first start putting quotes together to be, oh, that is really high. <laughs> I'm really frightened about that. And it is quite scary when you come up with a quote that's, you know, a few hundred pounds, 500 pounds or whatever. And you think, oh, my goodness, me. No one's ever going to pay that. Don't think that. Don't think that. You've got to be a bit fearless. You've got to be, that's how much it costs. And know that people will pay that. Established cake makers, me amongst them, charge, you know, can, can get five, six, seven hundred pounds for a wedding cake. So there's an absolutely no reason why you couldn't. Absolutely no reason. Okay. Um, oh, hang on, something went wrong here. That's it, yeah, fear is not, it, once you've overcome that, and once you've you realise that actually there are people out there that will pay that money. Um, and, the, and the next thing to understand, and I see a lot of people falling down this, this rabbit hole, should we call it a rabbit hole? Is that you can't mind read your couples. Um, when you send out a quote, if you're lucky, they'll come back the same day and say, oh, yes, please. And they'll pay uh, an initial payment. That's not that usual, though. <laughs> Just to let you know, that's not that usual. More often than not, think about it the other way around. If you're buying something for a few hundred pounds, chances are that you're going to get a few quotes for what you want. You know, if I wanted my patio laying, 
then I would probably get at least two, if not three quotes from different people. It's just the way that a lot of people do that. OK. And you're going to go for the not necessarily the cheapest, because lots of people don't go for the cheapest. They'll go for the one that makes the most sense for them, the, the one that and this is where we come back to ideal clients. It's the one that fits them the best. Yeah. So we're talking about patios. Let me give this as, a, as an example. So if I had three people come to give me a quote for a patio and one of them was a bit surly and was late and I couldn't get hold of them and stuff, but came round and gave me a quote and perhaps they were the cheapest. I wouldn't necessarily go for them because I'm thinking, well, perhaps I can't get hold of them. You know, they're not reliable. Um, I mean, it might be that the more expensive one is the one that's really organised, that you feel really comfortable with. Perhaps you've chatted about and they've got a, a cat and you've got a cat. And oh, what a lovely, you know, and they, they've they've sort of engaged with you and made the effort to actually find out a little bit about you. And it's those people that you're going to that give the money to because you feel comfortable and it's talk, talking about no like and trust if people are comfortable to give you money they will they will um but you can't mind read okay new businesses particularly bakers will 90 percent of the time assume that if a quote if someone doesn't come back to you with a quote they that the baker will assume that it's too high it's not always the case. It really isn't always the case. There could be a hundred reasons why your quote isn't taken up. It could be that they've gone to three bakers. And, I, you know, I'm, I actually encourage that sometimes, you know, when they say, oh, we're going to ask someone to see, absolutely, you must, you know, you must get a range of prices. <laughs> That's a sensible thing to do if you're spending 500 quid on something. Um, it could be that they've changed their arrangements. It could be that, Aunt Bertha has said, uh, oh, I'll make it for you. And they didn't think she would be able to. That kind of thing. You know, there's so many reasons why people won't come back to you and take you up on your quote. Um, I mean, I can't obviously give you hard and fast statistics on how much of those would be. It's too high, but it certainly isn't always the case. So don't assume that if you don't get um, feedback on your quote, that it's because you're too high. Ironically, it might be in on some occasions that you're too cheap. I was told once, I say once, within the last couple of years when I've been liaising and networking with lots of business people, that if all your quotes are taken up, then you're too cheap. Your pricing isn't right. Because there should be a percentage of people that go, oh no, that's a bit out of our budget. <laughs> Whether whether that's true or not, I don't know, but it, it's worth bearing in mind. Just accept that not everybody, A, not everybody will get back to you. And B, certainly not everybody will take you up on your quote. I would recommend, as most experienced bakers do, um, to do a follow up. So, for example, I email out my quote with terms and conditions. Don't forget those. Um, if I don't hear back. Usually after about a week, I'll send an email and say, just checking you got my quote, everything all right, um, anything you, any questions you had, all those kind of things. Um, quite often I'll get a, oh yes, yeah, sorry, we haven't got back to you. Yes, we're, you know, we're interested. Sometimes we get, you know, we've gone with someone else and quite a few times I'd hear nothing back, you know. Um, and there really isn't, I see this a lot in the, the my big Facebook group, I do see a lot of, oh, I'm really cross because it's so rude. You're wasting your energy. <laughs> you really are wasting your energy. If you get cross about people that don't come back to you. Yes, it is a bit rude, but, you know, that's business. Just accept it and concentrate on the ones that do and concentrate on getting new ones. OK, um, have we got any more questions? I'm just checking for questions. No, we're all right so far. Do ask if you've got any questions, by the way. Oh, comments, comments. If you're an experienced baker and you're watching, please do chip in with comments. More than welcome. Um, and one thing, never, ever, ever, don't you dare do this. This is Annie talking. I'm going to look over my glasses at you. Don't you ever 
on a second email say oh i can do it cheaper for you if you like no 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 don't be tempted to discount the price if there's a way of say of offering if it's out of your budget i can redo the quote for you you know i can take some bits off or whatever but don't don't say oh i might be able to do it on a discount for you doesn't look good you look desperate people don't want to don't want to deal with desperate people and it's really hard because you really want to <laughs> you really want the gig um but be strong honestly be strong um yes so louise says um i assumed it was because i was too expensive I had one last week for a birthday kit. yeah don't assume it it may be possible but don't assume it because that way lies madness. Honestly, it always matters. You've got to cal do your calculations and stick with them because you've got to make a profit. Think of that profit. Um, what's that cartoon character? There's also cartoon characters, aren't there? They, they think of money and their eyes do that ching ching cash register thing. <laughs> um, you know. So you've got to think of the profit all the time and you've got to think head, not heart. I know it's difficult because we're a creative industry, aren't we? And we want to be creative and we want our couples to be happy. And, you know, we give ourselves, we give so much of ourselves in what we do. But you've got to stop yourself short and you've got to use your head and say, what is my head saying here? Not your heart, not your poor old heart. <laughs> um, and all I can say is that the more you do this, the easier it does become. The more quotes you give out, the easier it does become. OK. Um, and the more you realise that people will pay four, five, six hundred pounds, whatever it is, for a wedding cake, they will. You've just got to find them. And you, 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 there you're going back to the ideal clients again. Are you looking in the right places for them? OK. If someone found you, I don't know, Facebook Marketplace, I said this before. I don't know why I have a thing about Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> it's just an example. But generally, people that want to buy things from Facebook Marketplace aren't the people that are going to want to pay 600 or 700 pounds for a wedding cake. Prove me wrong if you must, but you get you get the gist that drift, don't you? You get the gist. Um, uh, hello, Varsha. Hello. What have we got? Uh, this is perfect timing. I have my first wedding cake later this year and I'm struggling with pricing, looking for it. Oh, good. Yes, just take it all on board. Don't assume that things are too, uh, you're too expensive. You've got to price it up accurately because the chances are if they're going to a couple of different people, they will do the same. And it may well even be that if you price something and thought, oh, that's too expensive, I'll lop a, lop a bit off. And you say, oh, that'll be, uh, I don't know, 350. And the other people that they go to say, no, that's at least 550 or 600. They're going to think, why is she only 350 then? <laughs> because that would worry me. If I had three quotes for exactly the same thing and two were roughly the same and one was 200 pounds cheaper, I'd think, oh, hang on, what's, what's wrong with that one then? <laughs> wouldn't you? I think I would, wouldn't you? So you've got to cost, you know, according to what it costs you. Okay, thank you. So that's the brain work. That's the mindset work. Okay. Um, of course, the other side is the actual calculating, the actual physical, cal physical, yeah, calculating the money side. So the easiest bit to do, of course, is how much flour, how much butter, how much sugar, how much you know, the actual ingredient, that's easy. Just beware, and I've known people to do this. I don't think you would, particularly if you're experienced, if you've got a business already, but what you don't do is buy a, a, a bag of flour and a bag of cast sugar and whatever, and charge all of that if you haven't used it all. You only do the percentage that you actually use. So if I'm making a cake, that is what's today's today's cakes are six inch tall six inch so i'm using 12 ounces of flour i can't translate that to grams now Hang on, what's that in grams 
<laughs> anyway, it's not a whole bag of flour. So my cost would be how much flour I've actually used. I'm sure most of you would do that, but just, just be aware that you don't charge for the, all of it because that would make your costs, you know, that would take your costs way high. Um, so a cost according to what you actually use. Um, make sure that you've included everything that's dispensable. Is that the right word? Disposable. You know what I mean? Anything that gets used up, like parchment paper, cupcake cases, anything like that, um, that is used for that and then either thrown away or not used again, you've got to include that, a, a cost for that. If you, um, for example, buy a mould, a particular mould for a cake, you shouldn't charge the whole of that cost of that mould um, to that cake because you keep that mould and it's you can use it for other things. So um, you might put that in, uh, you might have include that perhaps in an overheads sort of general equipment cost each cake contributes slightly to that um, but then that's that comes out your profit anyway so I don't know what I'm talking about so that's where your profit is um, that's that's what pays for that um, so the the those things are moderately easy to calculate you know a box a board whatever um, the trickier bits are the overheads now I'm not going to go too much into overheads because I have a YouTube video where I go through it really in detail and I have my whiteboard and I do calculations and all sorts of things so I will put the link to that in the group in fact I've got a couple I've got another pricing one where I've sort of basically say what I'm saying now I'll put that in as well if you want to watch that but the overheads one is really quite useful because it will show you how to divide your house up <laughs> into rooms, work out the percentage of time you use each room for your business, and then you divide up your electricity, your council tax, yes, you can charge council tax, your mortgage, interest, various other bits, but it's all on that video, it's all there for you to have a look at. Um, and then you get a figure, you do all the calculations and you get a figure. Um, and so you add that figure to your cakes. OK, but wedding cakes, it's slightly easier because you might target and say, well, I'm going to make 50 cakes in a year or 40 cakes in a year, or 70 cakes in a year. So once you've worked out your what your overheads are, you can divide that by the number of cakes you plan to make. And then you you fix that. A proportion of that cost to each cake. I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Um, let's have it. Oh, let's have it. I'll do the questions in a second. I will do the questions in a second. Um, so, um, when you come to calculating, you add in that cost. So, what you're not doing for each cake is saying, oh, it's in the oven for about you know, for an hour. So that's this cost. So you're not going right back to basics. What you're doing is you're taking what you pay, the electricity and the this, that and the other, and you're dividing that up. OK, you can also use that for your tax return because you can claim that. I won't go into tax returns now. I might at some point, but not now. Um, right. Let's have a look at we've got some questions, haven't we? Um, Do you, hello Claire, do you include a set price for disposables? So for dis, what do you mean by disposables? Disposable what? So for every cake, oh, I might disappear. Do you mean things like parchment paper and bits and pieces like that? Is that what you mean? Um, yeah, I would, I probably wouldn't calculate, I've used 30 centimetres of parchment, therefore it costs this, that, and you can do if you really want to. But yeah, I, I put a little bit in there for that kind of thing, for sundries, okay, if that makes sense. Oh, Melanie, this is an excellent question. 
Um, do you charge differently for your time for different tasks, e.g. making sugar flowers set up consultations? Yes. Yes. I charge more for things that involve a lot of skill that I've spent years learning how to do. Um, so, yes, my sugar flowers, I will my costs. I might put this up soon, actually. I feel a, a rise coming on. Um, but I charge 30 pounds an hour. When I cost it, I cost it at 30 pounds an hour. Um, for baking, I think I do 20 pounds an hour for driving. I think I do 10 pounds an hour. So yes, I do it differently. I know some bakers who don't. I know some bakers who say, well, actually my time is worth this. So if I can earn 30 pounds an hour doing sugar flowers, I should be earning that all the time. It, it you know, it depends what you feel you want to do, but yes, um, different levels of skill for me mean different levels of um, charge, but that is an excellent question. Um, didn't include the cost of the cake samples. Yes, yes, you see. Um, so when I quote for a wedding cake, I put in there enough to cover making their taster box. But that's all included in the price. So when I when I quote, I quote for me going and con consulting somewhere, I quote for a taster box. Um, and it's all once, so I say it's everything included. So once you paid an initial payment, I don't call them deposits, but we won't get into that. Once you paid an initial payment, um, you you get the taster box as part of it and you get a consultation as part of it. Um, if they haven't paid an initial payment, but they want a consultation and a taster box, I charge 40 pounds for that, uh, which probably isn't enough considering the time, but that's what I charge. Okay, but that's a very good question. Um, some, uh, sometimes struggle with how much I need if I've never done a design before. It does come with experience. Yes, I've been caught out like that before. And if anyone who's ever done a cake with the ruffles <laughs> on the bottom, <laughs> oh my gosh, think of, think of how long it'll take you and then triple it because that takes blooming ages. It is a question of experience. Um, and to start with, for a long time, I tried to write down how long it took me or I'd notice the time or, you know, I'd, I'd make a, a, a bit of a note. So when I make, made my sugar flowers, I could work out roughly how long a big rose would take me, for example. But yeah, that comes in experience and you might well get it wrong. You might well quote for a cake thinking, oh, this this aspect of it is going to take me half an hour and you're there all morning. But, you know, but then similarly, there was some things that you charge with. Oh, that's going to take me at least an hour and it takes you 10 minutes. So it can be swings and roundabouts. But yeah, experience. But do try, if you can, to jot down, perhaps get a notebook or put it on your computer or your phone or whatever. Try to start, you know, um, jotting down how long things are taking you because it's really useful um, for obviously future quotes. Um, Baking paper. Yeah. Baking paper. I, I I suppose you can, if you really wanted to, you could be really, really precise. Um, but because none of that is vastly horrifically expensive, just to sort of cover cover cost for that is fine, I think. Yeah. Uh, do you make a complete cake eg six inches i try and make the smallest amount so I'd, I'd try and do a one egg mix um i've changed how i do them actually i used to do them as cupcakes and do various cutty things with them but i don't i do it different and differently now so um well first of all i try and do cake tasters at the same time so if more than one couple want cake tasters um I'll say, yes, I'm next doing them on this date and do them all at the same time. A bit more tricky if you're doing consultations, but you can freeze them. Um, so make them up, wrap them up, freeze them, and they taste absolutely fine. So you can take them out when you do your consultation. Um, obviously, make sure they're defrosted because that wouldn't go down very well. <laughs> um, 
but yes if you can batch cook them just be aware that three months in the freezer is is probably the limit any more than that and they're going to go a bit take them out and use them for trifle or something um, but yeah i try and do the the smallest amount if it's things like the way i do my recipes so if it's like vanilla lemon white chocolate and raspberry and there are some others those though when i make those with a basic vanilla recipe and then i flavor them so if i'm if i've got lemon vanilla white chocolate and raspberry in a batch of a, a taster box that's slightly easy because i could i make up the vanilla in enough with enough and then i divide it up and then flavor it so it depends on you know what, what which flavors are being ordered so it's a bit of planning, just a bit of organising um, and then a bit of freezing and there, there's less waste. But yes, you must. Oh, <laughs> defreeze. Yes, I do. <laughs> um, otherwise, what do you do with the rest of it? Well, I, I, I store them. I mean, things like flour and sugar and, you know, butter, not so much, but a stalk. I use stalk for my main um, sponge. Those have fairly long shelf life. I mean, flour and sugar have enormous shelf life so you're not going to waste any of that um eggs obviously slightly shorter so if i know that um I'm, i've not got any other cakes within the life of the eggs um i will use them domestically but only charge what i've used to my business does that make sense so if I, obviously if i buy a, a box of six and I only use two for my tasters I only charge those two eggs to my business. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that makes case. Um, the rest of the, the baked cake. Well, when you do tasters, um, rest of the baked cake. Yeah, so I'll freeze them on the whole. Um, sometimes I get cut-offs and things. You can freeze eggs and flour. Yes. Yes. Um, Although, I mean, flour's got such a long shelf life, hasn't it, on the whole? You just have to be careful with weevils and things like that. But if you store them properly, that's less likely. Uh, but yes, perhaps we'll have a, a, a freezing thread. And we, can all <laughs> we can all tell each other how, you know, how we freeze things, because that's quite useful. Yeah. Um, yes, I answered it already. Fab, fab, fab. Um, so I think that's sort of covered it, hasn't it? So you get your ingredients sorted out calculate those those are probably the easiest one oh and what i do is rather than start from scratch with each quote have in fact let me show you shall i show you my spreadsheet this is fun right hang on let's share the screen right here we go can you see that Ooh. So all those that are in my membership can access this, but this is basically um, what I do. So, oh yes, you can see it. So I'm looking at it on my phone. <laughs> so I, I mean, I'm a bit of an Excel geek. I love Excel. You can also do the same in Google Docs, uh, do Google Sheets, basically the same thing. Um, but you can put in how much something costs, what the size of cake is, how much you use. There's the calculation. So whenever I have a quote, I use these um, over here to say, right, will it cost me this much to make a six and eight and a 10 inch? And then what I do, um, this, is, this tab calculates how much it costs for so many sugar flowers and various other aspects of cakeage. So buttercream flowers, diagonal lines, you know, put in the whatever. Um, marble tea, oh yeah, that was a particular cake I was, I quoted for, they didn't come back to me on that one. Uh, drapes, those kind of things. So I put in here, how much the material, so the sugar paste, how much time it takes me to make one. There's my 30 pounds an hour. <coughs> So six peonies, for example, because peonies take me an hour and a half to make. If someone wanted a cake with six of those on, that would be £273 on the top. And then what I do, where has it gone? 
Oh, there it is. These are some of my quotes. Um, I've had, let me. Uh, oh no, I was going to hide those because it's a bit confusing. But basically, I've got three columns here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, basic cake goes in there, then any extras there. That's my overheads. I need to bring that down, it's gone down slightly. Delivery, so many miles, works it all out. Um, and then there, oh, and there's my percentage profit. I put 30 on that, usually I put 40. I must have had a, um, a weak moment, I put 30% profit. Um, and so that there, 133.95, that is how much profit I make from that wedding cake. I know exactly how much profit I make from that wedding cake. Um, and that's how I how I do it. I add it all up and then I have it there. So that that is how I do it on Excel. And this spreadsheet, let's stop showing. That spreadsheet I've sort of developed over quite an expanse of time, which is why it's in my membership. So if you want it, you have to pay me money, <laughs> basically. Um, so, um, yeah, ha, ha, record it, write it down somewhere where you can refer back to it. So if you get a cake that's similar, you can say, oh, well, let's take a few of my calculations from that cake. Have your basic, so you know what your six inch costs are, your eight inch costs are. And, and the joy of doing it on something like an Excel or Google Sheets is that as the cost of butter goes up and down and up and down, you can change the cost and it will calculate all the rest for you. Um, that's why I love these things, because it's magic the way it does it. <laughs> um, but a, a system like that just makes it so much more efficient. And when we come back to we need to make a profit and time is precious, time is money. If it's taking you two hours to quote for a cake, that's an awful long time. But if you've done a lot of the work already and it's on a spreadsheet, the chances are it might take you 10, 15, 20 minutes instead. And that's a that's a big difference in terms of your time, isn't it? So get yourself a system sorted out and, a, you know, organised with quotes um, and ones that you've quoted and what you quoted for and all those kind of things. I hope that all makes sense. Uh, I've answered it already, excellent. Uh, I think I've answered all the questions. If I haven't, ask it again. Because <laughs> it's when you're watching a live on a phone, it does it differently to when you're watching it on the desktop, doesn't it? Things. I think I've answered it all. If you do have any more questions on pricing, do pop them in the group. Um, I mean, as you possibly saw, if you looked at the rules when you joined the Wedding Cake Business Group, um, I said one of the rules is please don't just say what would you charge for this because it's utterly pointless. <laughs> it really is. How do you know what profit you're making if you haven't calculated it? Um, and someone else's ideal client might well be different from yours where they're finding their clients, who their clients are, are going to be different from yours. So saying, what would you charge? Isn't helpful. It really isn't helpful. And the more you do it, the quicker you get at it. Honestly, the more you do it and the more you get used to doing it, the quicker you are. And the other thing to remember that's just popped into my head is that don't forget to regularly review your pricing. Make sure that your ingredients are the right price. Um, and every so often, put your time per hour up, put it up and put your profit margin up. Um, because as you get more experienced and have done more, you should be charging more. Business head, business head. Um, I think that was all. Were there any more questions? I think I've covered everything. Was there anything you wanted me to talk about that I haven't? Do ask, do ask. Oh, and one um, one thing that sometimes people fall into the trap of, particularly with wedding cakes, is that they ask their friends and family if they priced it right. Your you know your your partner, if you have one, might be the most supportive person in the world, um, but unless they are a business owner who runs a business and prices things, they are not going to have 
an idea about a your who who your ideal client is, you know what goes into it all. So if they say, "Oh, that's an awful lot of money," ignore them. Tough love and all that, because um, your friends and family are not your ideal clients. And say if they're not business people and they don't understand how business works and how you know small business pricing works, then that's not going to be helpful to you. You're best off coming into a group like this and saying, you know, don't don't say what what should I charge for this? Say I've done this, I've done this, I've worked that out. I think could you help me? Have I worked it out properly? Could you, you know? Um, and then you know those of us that are a bit more experienced can say, oh yeah, or oh no, I th I think you've missed that or you've tweak that or whatever and that's how we can help because that's what we're that's what we do <laughs> i hope that makes sense uh, oh louise this is an excellent question louise says so would you think as i'm new to wedding cakes should i charge less because of an experience obviously costs are included of the moment you have a price per hour for your labor okay there's two things about this. One thing not to do is to say, oh, I'm only charging this because I'm new. I don't think that's where you were coming from, but don't fall into that trap of, oh, I'm only new, so I will um, you know, do a discount or I'll be really cheap for the first year, okay? And that comes back to ideal clients. If you attract, the type of people that want cheap wedding cakes, when you put your prices up, you've got to start all over again and start attracting different people. What you would do when you start, as you say, it's to do with inexperience, isn't it? So I would charge 30 pounds an hour for making sugar flowers. Okay. Um, you might decide, actually, I'm going to charge a bit less per hour. But then of course, if you're less experienced, it's going to take you longer. So <laughs> um, just, just remember this. At the end of the day, a couple aren't that bothered as to whether you've um, never done a wedding cake before or how many years you've been going. At the end of the day, what they want is a beautiful wedding cake on their wedding day. If you can do that for them, which you can, <laughs> they will get the result that they paid you for. So the fact that you're inexperienced is actually neither here nor there to a certain extent. It's gonna, it's gonna disadvantage you more than it is gonna disadvantage them, if that makes sense. So it might be that you make sort of rookie mistakes about the amount of time you spend on something or um, talking to the venue or something like that. Okay, but at the end of the day, what you're doing is you're, giving the couple what it is they want, which is a beautiful wedding cake. Um, so yeah, so certainly don't, I'm, I don't know if you do, I don't think you would do this, Louise, but don't do the, oh, well, I'm only just started. So, you know, and, and don't do the, oh, I'm not sure because I've only just started. Don't do that. <laughs> Got to exude confidence because people want to be, have confidence in you. People want to be confident that you know what you're doing. And as I said last week, if you don't know what you're doing, pretend you do and then come into this group <laughs> and find out what you should be doing. <laughs> because that's that's what we're all about. People buy from confidence and they want to know, they want confidence that you're going to give them what they what they want. I hope that all makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, so so stick to your price per hour, Louise, and then as you get more experienced, you say, right, well, I'm putting that up because I'm, you know, I deserve more. I'm worth more. And the result is worth more. <coughs> I hope that makes sense. Righty-ho. Oh, my goodness me. It's quarter to one already. I've got to go and buttercream a cake now. I've got to make it duck egg blue. Beautiful design. Uh, it's a little birthday cake. I don't often do birthday cakes, but it's a friend of mine, so I said I would. Um, and yeah, little duck egg blue with lovely. She's designed the invitations and she gave me the invitation. I said, oh, yes, I can do a cake like that. <laughs> so I'm really excited. 
Uh, so doing little cakes is quite a novelty because usually it's sort of three tiers and, you know, heaving 12 inch, um, six inch deep, 12 inch cake is blooming heavy. <laughs> If you're any experience uh, doing wedding cakes, just bear that in mind that they're blooming heavy. Uh, that's by the by. Anyway, all righty ho then, everybody. Um, I hope that's been useful. As I said, just use the group for any questions. You know, e you know, if you wanted to just put your calculations in, say this is what I've calculated. Does it look about right? We'll we'll help um, because that's that's the aim of the group to get you experienced in doing that okay just saying oh yeah charge 200 quid for that is no good to anybody it doesn't help you at all um but yeah if you need help with any of the ins and outs ask away that's what we'll do all right you're very very welcome thank you so much for joining me it's lovely to have people to talk to <laughs> quite sad and lonely um and yeah have a lovely weekend um i don't know what i'm going to talk about next week uh i'll put something in the group what do you want me to talk about i'll um i'll put something up i'm quite busy at the weekend though so it might not be at the weekend um but at some point i'll put in a what do you want me to talk about on friday and you can let me know what you'd like righty ho oh good glad it's been helpful louise Hurrah. um oh you're welcome you're welcome amber and i always love a smiley emoji you're welcome melanie you're welcome uh Hang on, what's version? Um, I'm sure I'm only doing this. I've made a questionnaire to take to clients, so I'm asking all the questions. Oh, that's a good idea. We'll perhaps do a thread on that consultations and what to ask, what to tell them before, that kind of thing. Yeah, perhaps we can do that. Um, yeah, brilliant. So have a lovely weekend, everybody. Um, have a lovely week. If you're doing weddings or fairs at the weekend, do show us, do let us know how things are going and what you're doing and all that kind of stuff um and i will see you next friday just watch out for what it is and what the time is because i'm not sure what my timings are next week um yes so have a lovely week and i will see you soon all right bye